Hey everybody, good afternoon and uh, let's talk about the Nikon ZF today. I have been using this Nikon ZF for the last 15 days now, last 10-15 days now. And uh, I wanted to spend some time with you talking about what I think is good, what I think is not so good, what I think that can be improved. I'm hoping you, you guys can hear me loud and clear, but uh, just setting up the mic, just making sure that uh, you can hear me loud. Never sure how things won't work out, but yeah, it's good to test. So again, uh, I'll try to speak up a little bit, but again, the whole point behind today's conversation is around the Nikon uh, ZF or the, or the ZF. Now, I have been using this camera for the last 10 to 15 days. I'm repeating myself at this point of time, but uh, this video will be kind of a review from a user. And uh, I'll tell you about the bad things, the not so bad things, and the good things, and the average things and the, and the really good things. Now, before I let you know, I have been, I had used the Z6 II, I had the Z6 II with me, and this camera has the Z6 II sensor. Now, one of my, uh, one of my reviewers, uh, one of my subscribers, he had a question around the sensor, bit, uh, the difference between the sensor of the Nikon D750 and the Z6 II. Now, there's a big difference between those two sensors. The Nikon D750, which I had back in 2015, 16, around that time, 16, 17, I think was an amazing camera for photography. It wasn't a good camera for videos. But the sensor technology has, has improved by leaps and bounds right now. So the low light capabilities of the Nikon D750 was good, but the Z6 II and the ZF, this sensor, is way better than the D750. That's the biggest change that I see. The color science Nikon, I think, has improved with their mirrorless cameras because I do see a difference between the colors that come out of my D850 or the D750 versus the Z6 II and the, Z, and the ZF. Although I don't own the Z6 II anymore, I sold it. This is a backside illuminated sensor. Very fast, 15 frames per second. I don't think the D750 did 15 frames per second. Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the other. So how about this? How about let's go, go over the uh, features and uh, functions. But before we get into the details of the features and functions, let's go and talk about the negatives of this camera, which aren't that many. So we'll get through this very quickly. The biggest negative is the, the biggest negative is the inability to hold this camera while you're doing long shoots. So you have to depend on your wrist a lot because you, there's no space for your fingers to grab hold onto it. Now the way I, ha I hold it is I kind of put this strap under my, in my arm and I hold it like this. Now I don't want Nikon to make a grip or, or change the form, fit and function for this camera by, by increasing the grip. grip. This form, fit, and function that came in from the ZFC design is, is very much appreciated. I love this design. So for me, although it's a negative because when you start using longer lenses, uh, you can't hold the camera like that. But you know what, guys? I just hold the camera from my, uh, from my lens side. I, if it's a big lens like a 24 to 70 that I use, instead of, instead of me holding the camera like this, I just hold it with the lens. And that's the whole idea behind it, because some of those lenses, the 24 to 70, the 70 to 200, those are heavy lenses. Those lenses tend to be on the heavier side. And uh, holding a camera like this with a lens, that ah, doesn't make, I didn't like it. That's my opinion though. Holding it with the lens like this makes more sense. I'm, I'm okay with it. Now, that's the biggest negative, the missing grip. But that's part of the design that makes this camera look trendy, that makes this camera look um, like it's a camera from the 1970s. So no Nikon, that's not a negative on you. Um, you guys did an amazing job with, with the form, fit and function of this camera. 
good size, strongly built and uh, able to hold this properly can be a negative, but for some people, they can go for the Z62 or the Z63, which is coming up in, in the next few days. Now, for me, that's not a problem. The second negative is the, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have spoken about this, is the ISO feature over here. There's no way to automatically change the ISO, uh, but you know what? I have that on my I menu. Just, just use that feature from there. So again, those things came in from the ZFC, not a big deal at all. Now let's talk about the good things and let's start with uh, with a comment coming in from a semi-professional and what I think are the, are the really good things for this that this camera has. Let's start with the battery life because if you like this camera, the battery life is very important because if you're doing street photography, you might be out there for three, four hours. And there are some cameras where the battery life runs out within within two hours and, and changing batteries is a hassle. You want to travel light, right? You want to travel light when you, when you go out on the streets. The battery life is exceptionally good. I get around 2000 shots with videos on this, on this battery. It is the same battery that they use in the Z8. Again, I, my Z8 and this one has the same battery. No complaints, fantastic battery life. Now let's go to the next, next thing. Is the 24 megapixel sensor. Now I have the Z8, which is the 45 megapixel sensor. And this is the Z62 sensor, which is the 24 megapixel sensor. The se I have all I had always liked the Z62 sensor because to me that was one fantastic imaging that that I used to get. I I I don't think I used to get that kind of imaging from Sony or from uh, uh, Fuji. I'm gonna get a lot of hate from Fuji guys, but I'll be very honest. The Z62 sensor was one of my favorite sensors out there. The dynamic range, the color rendition, the 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 color contrast that I used to get from that Z62 sensor was not there. It's not there in the Z8. No, there's a lot of noise of images coming in from the Z8 sensors. And a lot of photographers, they, if you, if you do an event photographer like me, I try to do it indoors. Most of the events happens indoors. So again, if you go outdoors, there's sun, if you come indoors, there's shade, and you want that sensor to be able to get, capture enough information, this does it. Fantastic, that's the thing I love in it. The other good point about the sensor of this camera and the Z62 sensor is the low light capabilities and and, uh, and the color rendition, image rendition. Um, fantastic image rendition on this one. 24 megapixel as compared to 45 megapixel is like bigger eyes taking more image in. Uh, so if you end up doing landscape photography, which most of you guys will be going in the morning to get the best picture of the landscape, right? With the light that you have in the morning or in the evenings, you need a sensor that can capture a lot of data. The iPhone sensor can't do that. A lot of sensors out there aren't that good to do it, but this one does it very well. That's my, and it's a backside illuminated sensor. So it does, does it much, much better. The other thing that I liked about the sensor is the capability to search the eye in near dark light. I am surprised that I never had a camera like this that could search um, for eyes in near, in near dark light. And then I'll, I'll show you some images, but I'll, I'll let you decide um, on, on how it looks. But that is a fantastic sensor. And I, and, and after the Z62, which I didn't like for certain reasons because of the autofocus and the kind of selling that Nikon had done with two sensor, two, two, two uh, processors in it, which was kind of not that great. Other than that, I loved the sensor in the Z62. Now you don't have that situation over here. Like I've said, the next good point is the looks. This camera looks really good. And what I have done is I've taken this um, um, soft shutter. Um, I, I used the red color shutter. You can use any, any shutter, but that's the one that I thought looked really good. Uh, this camera looks really good in the hands. 
although right now I have a different um, um, lens on it which is slightly heavy but if you put a light lens like the 28 mm f 2.8 lens on it or the 40 mm f 2 lens on it they would be perfect with this camera because those are light lenses and uh, uh, for street photography I would say use the 28 mm <clears throat> now for vlogging purposes you have this rotatable screen that you can you can vlog I'm going to show myself right now if I can quickly this one show myself right there but for vlogging purposes you can do that you can do it very well over here now the other good thing that I see with the sensor is uh, let me lower it down so we can we can have a good conversation the other good thing that I see with this is uh, the size of this camera it's not that huge it's not it's not a bulky camera it's, it's a very good street uh, um, street settings camera now the next good thing that I see that you can autofocus let me take that word back I'll come back to the autofocus that you can search for that subject automatically even if you're using manual lenses so there are many lenses that I wanted to share with you on, on the ones that I'm using with this one and the ones that were lying on my on on, <clears throat> on my um, shelf gathering dust that I've started using on this camera and the ability to f to search for that subject and being able to auto focus on that makes this camera very very usable now how for example let's take this lens it's the Voigtlander 50mm f1.2 lens I hope this is in focus this lens is a manual lens for Leica M bodies the kind of color contrast that it produces on images makes it one of the best lenses that I've used for portraits and this obviously has become my favorite lens it's the Voigtlander 50mm f 1.2 lens I don't know why I, I would go and buy um, a huge 50mm f 1.2 lens from Nikon but this lens does it it's a manual focus lens but what I'm doing is I'm using a tech art L2 Z T TZM02 adapter with the latest update okay the, put the latest firmware update on it or else it, it won't focus what I have done is I'm using all of my manual focus lenses that are L mount with this adapter and it helps me auto focus this manual focus lens and 90% of the time in good light the autofocus is stunning I'll show you show you images and for some reason the images coming out of this lens have a different look and feel the Nikon lenses that I am using let me show you that the one that I used the one that I use the most is the 24 to 70 this is the F mount lens I'm using the adapter with it I used this lens quite a bit for portrait photography and this is my favorite lens for events but what I learned so although that gives me a zoom from 24 to 70 and I like it at 2.8 what I realize is that this 50 mm from Voigtlander is producing much cleaner much better images and with the tech art adapter I'm actually making it out of focus uh, very quickly and it's just a fantastic way to use this camera now there is a technique to that to that autofocus okay when you use that autofocus follow these three steps the first thing is use the so disengage the autofocus from the shutter button use the back button autofocus so in good light you probably will get 99 90% 95% of the time you'll get perfect autofocus in good light it is in evenings where there's a little bit less light is when I see the tech art adapter not work that well so what you want to do is you want to use the back button autofocus I use my AEL AFL button to do a back button autofocus it reach it does 19 99% of the work 
but then I press my OK button to get into critical focus, get into say 100% um, <clears throat> um, into the image and I do some manual adjustments to get that focus in line. And after that, most of the work is done. So what you're doing is you're essentially converting your manual focus lenses to autofocus. And so far my favorite has been the white lander over here. No complaints, fantastic, no complaints. Now I want to show you the other lens that uh, surprised me. This is the second lens that I'm gonna to talk to you about is a lens that I bought back in 2016. It used to be a $108 lens actually. And it's from the old AIS world. This is the 135mm f2.8 AIS lens. What I'm doing is I'm using the Gabal adapter and connecting that adapter to the Tecart adapter. So there are two adapters on this lens that converts this Nikon mount manual lens to an autofocus lens on the Z body. And the kind of images I'm getting from this are out of the world. I can't, I, I cannot believe that a hundred and a something hundred and eighty dollar or hundred and ten dollar lens that I got on eBay, which is from the 1970s, can produce images that rev, that, that that can compete with the images today, with from from from. Amazing Sigma 135mm f1.8 lenses. I'll, I'll add some images over there. Take a look at that. But for, for bang for the buck, this is an amazing lens that you should use with the Gabal adapter along with Tecart. Or, or although I don't like Tecart a lot, I mean, don't, I mean, it does the job. Um, there is another one called Megadap. If they give you this kind of an adapter, go with a Megadap adapter. That's my opinion. Uh, I felt my adapter did a better job than than, than Tecart. Um, but Tecart adapter works as well. It's a little more handy. But bang for the buck, this lens does a fantastic job. I would say you go ahead and use that. Um, lens profile is really good because I just hold on to this lens as I walk. I don't hold on to the body, I just hold on to this lens as I walk on the streets. And again, the color, color rendition that you get, you, you will get some, some purple fringing, but you can take it out very easily with the filter, <clears throat> a filter on, on, on uh, Lightroom. So that's about it that I wanted to share with you. I'll be, I'll be sharing more, more, um, more of my experience with this lens, but again, uh, the Voigtlander, 50mm f1.2 is undoubtedly one of my favorite lenses and is the best performing lens on, on my Nikon um, ZZF. The 135mm is also fantastic. Now, the third reason, I'm going to make another video for the third reason, is the in-body image stabilization capabilities of this camera. It's probably the best in the Nikon lineup today. And I think it is among the best in all of, um, it's, it's among the best in all of the competition as well. So again, uh, instead of taking photos from your iPhone, just use a camera, just with, with the right lens on it, capture images properly, edit your images. I do a lot of editing as well, but edit your images and have fun as you, as you use the ZF. Do I recommend the ZF to buyers? Yes, I do. It is, probably the best looking camera and for Fuji users I would ask you to go ahead and try this camera at least once when it comes to Fuji I feel, feel like Fuji is slightly less chunkier smaller um, slightly lighter but again they have an APS-C sensor um, this one is a full frame sensor a different features and functions brings in the best features and functions from the Z9 Z8 into a smaller body that looks very nice um, and 
is a street camera in a small form. form. So, so far I've done portrait, I've loved it. I've done landscape, I've loved it. Uh, I've done low light imagery, I've loved it. I'm gonna take it again tomorrow to do something else. I'll, I'll share that my experience with you. But guys, if you have any questions, keep, uh, keep posting them. I'll try to keep answering those questions. Adapters are working very well. The, the, um, the Sony E to Z mount adapter, which is from Megadap, works very well. I'm happy with that. This is the TechArt adapter for L uh, for, for Z to M M mount lenses, which is um, <clears throat> for for Leica M mount lenses. You can adapt it over here, and this adapter works very well as well. So again, no complaints so far. With that being said, um, I'll add some more images. Take a look, guys. In the next video, I'll be adding a lot of images. Take a look at that. I'll be going out for low light photography tonight. Um, and I'll be using a native Nikon lens. The 50mm f1.8 S lens is the one that I'm planning to use. I'll let you know how it works, okay? Talk to you soon, guys. Thank you.